Van D, a dynamic leader with decades of experience building companies and crushing sales. He's been there and done that. Ladies and gentlemen, hello, my name is Van D. Inspiring audiences across the country to do it too. Here's Van. Hey, welcome back to the Van D podcast. Man, I'm glad you tuned in with me today. I've got a fun topic that I've been doing my whole life so I can speak with experience. Change is good. Change is good. Changing is good. So, you know, your future depends on many things, but mostly yourself. My mother, God rest her soul, always said, you are your own worst enemy. And it really, amongst many other things she said to me that stick with me, you are your own worst enemy stuck with me throughout my whole business career. So let's talk about what does that really mean for just a minute. So what that means to me is if good things have happened to me in my life, which they have, it's probably because I had something to do with it. I generated it. I made it happen. So it also means on the flip side, if bad things happen to me in my life, I probably had something to do with it, which is very true. Anything that I'm not proud of or negative things, um, I usually had something to do with. Maybe it's being around the wrong people, doing the wrong thing. Um, You know, growing up, I was not your role model kid. I was wild non-conforming, rebellious. I was respectful, but I was the youngest of five, and I I, I think they kind of just let me do my own thing, which I did. And even growing up in junior high and high school, I I felt like the most blessed guy on the planet because I really had great friends. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, I was not a great student, I didn't have a lot of direction. Um, how I got these these role model friends in junior high and high school, and I went to the largest high school in the state of Nebraska. Um, I had friends that everybody wanted to hang out with, and I was lucky enough to be right in the middle of it. So change is good, right? So my friends, a lot of them were... All state basketball, all state football, all state this, all state that, academic. I was none of them. I was not a great athlete. I participated, but I was not good. I participated because they were all involved in it. I watched them be the stars, I was their biggest cheerleader. And then one day in high school, at the end of my high at end of high school, I decided I want I want to make a change with who I am. I want to be an athlete. I want to be good like all my buddies have been growing up. So I decided to start running sprints. I decided to start lifting weights. I made all these changes in my life, and I decided, now, change to me and transformation are the same thing. In in my definition, change and transformation are the same thing. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to try out for college football. I shared that with several people, and they were like, Deeb, man, do yourself a favor. You're not going to make it. You're not going to, you know, Don't do that to yourself. Even my head football coach in high school said, you're not cut out to go to college and play football. But I had one guy, and I'm going to say his name, David Underwood. He came, he used to call me star, and he said, if anybody can do it, you can. Give it a shot. I tell you, I'm still talking about it today. Um... And that's a whole nother discussion with you that words matter to people. Words can make people's life when you encourage and empower people. 
So I decided to go out for football at the University of Nebraska at Omaha. And I not only made the team, but I ended up starting junior varsity ahead of people that were all state. And I want to tell you something. I made a change. I made a transformation. I started lifting weights. I started running. All of a sudden, man, I'm I'm in I'm a specimen. I mean, I looked good. I was strong. I was faster. I'll never say I was fast because that'd be a lie, but I was faster. So what that did for me is when I decided to make a change, I told you a change to me and transformation are two different, are two of, two of the same things. But what it did for me is discipline. It taught me that discipline. I can do anything with discipline. Discipline to running the stadium stairs at my high school, to running 40, 40-yard 40 dashes, to lifting weights. Having dis- discipline in your life will give you an attitude that there's nothing you can't do. And I'm not just talking about sports. It could be in academics. For me, when I talk to you all in my podcast, I'm talking about business. I'm talking about getting better in business. You know, I believe by all the thousands of people that I've been fortunate enough to speak in front of and to coach, I believe people are truly afraid to change because it's out of their comfort zone. Change, transformation, discipline, it can be hard, ladies and gentlemen. It can be hard, but guess what? Anything that's hard is worth it. Discipline will get you there. Do you know something, and I, I, I really relate to, to what the Bible says. Did you know that the Bible says, do not be afraid 365 times? Isn't that crazy? 365 times it said, do not be afraid. So you may be sitting here right now listening to this podcast saying, you know what, Van, there's a lot of things I want to change in my life. I don't want to be an average salesman anymore. I don't want to be number 50 on the list in my company. I don't want to come to work and just go through the motions and the routine. I want to be a better husband, a better wife, a better spouse. I want to be a better parent. I want to be a better employer, a better manager, a better employee, a better human. Well, guess what? You can make that change if you want it bad enough. There's nothing you can't change in your life. So I'm going to tell you something a little crazy. Like I said, I always used to be the wild man, non-conforming rebel, From my own experiences, I have incorporated change throughout my entire life. I found things that I want to make changes about, and then I do. And guess what? 99.9% of the time, great things happen because I made a decision to change. We all have that ability. I always want to change my life for the better. We all do. Why not? We only get one shot in this form. So I'm going to tell you something that you may be amazed at. One of the most significant changes that I made in my life was I always admired people who didn't drink alcohol. And you're saying, what? Why would you admire people that didn't drink alcohol? And, I, and my answer to you is because it was probably a challenge for them to be in a crowd where everybody else is drinking, be at a party, be at a tailgate, be at a bar, be somewhere at a social gathering where everybody's drinking and they're not. And I want to tell you something. I always admired people who didn't, who stood out in a crowd. I actually thought whenever I'd run into a non-drinker, and that doesn't mean people that get drunk. This just means 
people that have chosen not to be like everybody else. I, those of you that know me and have listened to my previous podcast, when I built my company, I built it on being different in my industry. I didn't want to be part of the crowd. I didn't want to be part of the real estate community and do business like they all did. No. In 1993, we revolutionized the way real estate sold by having virtual offices. Nobody was doing that in 93, but it made sense to me, so I incorporated it. So believe me, I admire people that are different because I am that person. So I made a decision years ago. I'm going to give it a shot not drinking. Just see what it does. I had a first cousin, I'm going to mention his name, Mark Shada, no longer with us. Young man passed away, but he was a non-drinker his whole life. And man alive, I want to tell you something. I admired him. He was one of the happiest people I've ever met. Always fun to be around, laughing. Just a guy you want at a party, and he would have a Diet Coke in his hand. Never alcohol. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to give this thing a shot of not drinking. I I have an issue with sugar where, you know, if I had a glass of wine or a beer, it would keep me up at night. And so I figured, you know what, there's probably going to be a lot of great things that happen for me if I make that decision. And I decided to do that years ago. And I want to tell you something. Everywhere I'd go, I noticed envy. I noticed that people were like, what? You aren't going to have a drink? I said, no, I'll just have a bottle of water. I'll have a sparkling water. Now, to a lot of people, I would say, I'm going to get one in a little bit, just so they wouldn't ask me anymore. But I noticed the envy. Sometimes people would verbalize it, or I could see it in their eyes. I was just at a big, big event in Scottsdale, Arizona, with a lot of muckety mucks. And one of the guys with there was there, owns a big Fortune 500 company. And I was excited to see him. He comes over to my table and says hi to me. And he has a glass of scotch in his hand, which he always has. And he noticed I had a bottle of water. And he asked me, Hey, Van, can I get you a drink? And I said, no, thanks. I said, I've got my water. And he goes, and he just decided to say, so you're not drinking today? And I said, no. I said, I I, I haven't been drinking. You know, I, I just don't drink. And uh, he looked at me, and he was like, wow, how do you do that? He goes, how difficult is that? It was amazing the questions he was asking me, basically saying, what should he do? How could he become someone that doesn't? So I could see how much he admired me. Okay, so I'm not going to go on and on about that. But that was a change, ladies and gentlemen. It wasn't easy. It's a discipline. And it makes me feel great. I love saying I'm a non-drinker. Does that mean it's bad? No, all my friends do. I don't ever judge anybody on anything. But I like to be different. I decided to make that uh, a change, and it worked. So I'm telling you, you can use that that example in anything is. In anything, you want to make a change. Do not be afraid. So building my company, back to business, building my company, I had to incorporate change to get better. But mostly the changes I made were with me. The changes I made were I wanted to have an attitude that I wanted to learn something new every day. I wanted to learn. I wanted to go to work every day and try to learn something new to get better. That was a change for me because before, oh, I know it all. I've been in real estate for a long time and I know everything. I decided to make that decision that I wanted to change my attitude and start really opening myself up and trying to learn more. Change sometimes takes time. Just remember that. And I want to tell you something else that's non-business. My inherited struggle. Now, when I say inherited struggle, you know it was a family issue. 
I'm the youngest of five, and I grew up around a lot of people that were critical and judgmental. That doesn't mean they weren't wonderful people. It just meant that they were critical and judgmental of others. I never wanted to be that guy. So I decided, I mean, for a long time I joined in until I got a little older. I realized I don't want to be that person that's critical and judgmental of others. I had to make a change. I had to make a change in myself that says I'm not going to be that person to be critical and judgmental. It It's a struggle. The reason why I called it a struggle because it's easier to point out flaws and bad things in people than it is to find good. Being critical and judgmental, to me, also <laughs> means that you're jealous and envious. Once I change my attitude to only try and find good in people, my whole outlook changed. And you guys know, I, I wasn't born uh, perfect. I don't think any of us are. We're always trying to get better. Hopefully, we're trying to get better. If you want to get better every day, and in order to do so, we need to change. So like I said earlier, change sometimes takes time. We have to respect the growing process that it doesn't happen overnight. You guys have probably heard this story, but if you haven't heard it, I want you to listen to it. I didn't make this up. Somebody else uh, um, emphasize this in their books and I in motivational speeches, and I always love to listen to it again and again. There's a story about a Japanese executive who stressed the need for patience and discipline when it comes to quality. And this executive would talk about the quality process. Learning to change takes time. It's like growing a bamboo tree. So some of you may know this and some don't, but once a bamboo seed is planted, you have to water that seed every day once you plant it. You do it for four years, and guess what happens? Nothing. Every year you water it, you don't see anything. You see nothing on the outside. After four years the tree will break ground. It will end up growing 60 feet in the next 90 days. Now listen to that. Talk about change takes time. This bamboo tree, you watered it for four years and nothing happened. Then all of a sudden it grew 60 feet in 90 days. Change takes time. So in this case, you measured the results of being patient with change. Everybody needs a target to shoot at because without a target, we can't shoot in any direction and we never know if we are hitting anything worthwhile. You got to ask yourself, are we making progress toward changing? And I believe that we have to measure our change. Every day, ask yourself, Am I doing anything to help me make the change I want to make in my life? Maybe you did something for five minutes today that will help you change something about yourself that you don't like. You, you, you are the only person that can hold yourself accountable. Do you remember what I said my mom used to say to me? You are your own worst enemy. Well, that meaning to me also means I have to hold myself accountable. If I don't hold myself accountable on making changes in my life and being patient about changing, who's going to? If you truly want to change your life, you have to take baby steps every day, not just once in a while, every day. Why? Because change is good. Watch what will happen to your life if you make the decision to make a change. Now, I want to give you something to do. If you truly have things in your life you want to change, I would love it if you got a pen and paper and maybe you, you, you 
listen to this podcast again. I didn't say get your iPad or your phone. I really want you to write this down. I want you to use an old-fashioned pad and an old-fashioned pen. And just write at the top one thing you want to change about yourself. Just do this. And then close your eyes and visualize what your life will look like once you make that change. Maybe when I told you that I decided I didn't want to drink, maybe that hit home with you. If that is, write it down. Look at how your life will change if you don't anymore. There can be a number of things in your business life and your personal life that you want to change. I'm asking you to please write it down. And then underneath, once you write down what you want to change, start writing remedies and solutions of what you want to do tomorrow to help see that change become a reality. It doesn't have to be something very big. It can be very small. The smallest of changes in our lives can make gigantic impacts. And then I want you to grab that piece of paper that you wrote all that on, and I want you to tape it to your bathroom mirror so you have to see it every day. Trust me, just do this, okay? Don't question it. Unless you're perfect and you don't have any changes to make, then, you know, then don't do it. But if you want to live an awesome life and make changes, do this. Put it in the mirror. Look at it every morning. Remind yourself. Change is good and will make your life better. So, Let me help you change for the better. I'd love to come speak to your company, your small group, your workshop, a Zoom call. I'd love to coach you personally, just you and I, individually. Don't hesitate to reach out. No better time than the present to try to change. All my contact info can be at my website. Uh, You can find out how to get a hold of me at vandeeb.com. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for tuning into this podcast. Changing is so important to me uh, to help us live better lives. And I hope you really got something out of this short podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in. Remember to please rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast so you get my, my latest and greatest podcast when they come up. Appreciate your time. Thank you. A Parkville Media Production.